Hello, hello, more dimmers here, and welcome to another pairing of the Skilling Open semi-finals. I show you already the, the games of Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniasi. This time I would like to show you a Wesley So who's gonna play as white, and Hikaru Nakamura, who's gonna play as black. So this was the only decisive game of the first day of the semi-finals. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, we have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop c4, bishop c5, so duoco piano on the board. And now the main line, c3, we have knight f6, uh, and although d4 is possible here, uh, however, there are a lot of variations where this pawn is hanging, so white also have to know all the lines and possibilities, um, you know, what's gonna happen. But the most popular answer here uh, is simply d3. So not d4 yet, first prepare that, bring the rook to e1, and this was played plenty of times for a couple of hundreds of years um, this opening has at least 400 years or more uh, we have d6 we have the castle we have h6 now taking away the square g5 for example from the bishop so the bishop cannot uh, make this pin uh, and now we have rook e1 as i said over protecting e4 and preparing in the future d4 we have a castle knight b to d2 now this knight would like to go to, to f1 uh, and then maybe this way, maybe this way, uh, mostly it want to land to the f5. We have a5, very typical maneuver, countering any possible b4, uh, and now we have knight f1 as planned. We have bishop e6, now attacking the bishop on c4, so bishop goes to the, to the b5 uh, and not pinning this knight. So usually what, what is happening here, this knight is go to, to e7. Uh, uh, but in our game we have bishop b6, we have knight g3, so this knight want to go to the f5, very typical outpost for white pieces. Uh, and now again, we have couple of games in the database where knight e7 uh, was played, so this is pretty obvious. Also another maneuver in the duo copiano for black is um, not very typical, but you should know that if you play uh, queen b8, queen a7 and... Uh, play on this diagonal with the queen. So this is how you can bring the queen to the game in, in this opening. And there are some other openings where sometimes you can use that idea. But Hikaru Nakamura plays the novelty here, a knight h7. But this is novelty for a reason, not really that great move. We have h3, knight g5, exchanging this knight. So we have knight g5, h takes on g5, and now finally d4 is possible. So uh, we have e takes on d4, and now, of course, we don't take with the pawn uh, because black have two pieces attacking the d4. So, of course, black would win the pawn, uh, but rather bishop c6 first, b takes on c6, and only now c takes on d4. Now we have c5, undermining this pair of the pawns and now we have d5 so what just happened uh, white actually have this backward pawn which can become the target uh, but it's not that easy actually uh, to attack the pawn for now we have bishop d7 uh, and now we have a4 in some of the lines in some of the variations black want to actually push this pawn to, to a4 and paralyze the pawns on the on the queen side. This is why we have a4. And a4 not only blocking the pawn, but also makes a very nice rook lift possible. So for example, the rook can join the game this way, as there are no pieces on the on the third rank. So uh, for example, if now queen f6 is played, it's a pretty interesting move because now c4 is possible and attack on the on the f2. So that could be uh, very interesting. Would white can do is simply play rook a3 and after c4 then rook can come to f3 and the queen has to you know retreat go somewhere else so uh not really possible this is why we have rook e8 first going to the semi-open file and also putting some pressure on the e4 pawn. Of course, it's defended, but in the future, maybe it cannot be supported by the pawn because uh, of this annoying bishop. So white have to, you know, really think what to play next. And this was the, the moment where the grandmasters in studio started to discuss what would be the best plan. So, for example, Sam Shankland who said, OK, I'm not the expert in that, but uh, what I would like to play here is, for example, b3, bring the bishop on this beautiful 
beautiful diagonal and th this knight probably would be great to to go this way uh, land on the c4 and on the c4 for example it could support the, the e5 and so on so that would be the idea and peter leko said uh, but not really because the problem is this b3 pawn this b3 pawn gonna be backward pawn and it's not really possible to push it to b4 as these two pawns actually uh, protect b4 so this pawn can be very easily targeted by the rook and a white would have to you know uh, use some resources to defend that pawn so not really the greatest uh, but we have bishop d2 by wesley so so wesley so confirmed that better to have this bishop on the c3 uh, and defend the pawn on b2 uh, and here hikaru had the first chance uh, of playing pretty nice like queen f6 so what would be the idea? First, attacking the pawn on the on the b2, but also if white is not careful, then of course this pawn can be pushed and we're gonna have the attack on f2, would be very sneaky. Of course, it can be refuted very easily with the bishop c3, but at least queen gonna have in the much more active square. So queen g6, now g4 is possible, and there is even more pressure on this pawn on the e4. So that would be pretty nice for, for black to have the queen there, uh, but Hikaru Nakamura decided that he first want to play c4 and only then a uh, queen f6. Uh, so we have queen f3 saying, okay, if you want, I can exchange the queens. So of course, Hikaru doesn't want to. So rook b8. Now bringing the rook to the semi-open file, putting the pressure on the on the b2. However, we have now, as I said, bishop c3 uh, defending this b2. So pretty solid. And also this bishop is very, very powerful on this beautiful diagonal we have bishop c5 now so hikaru knows that and he want to exchange that bishop uh, because his bishop is not doing that great uh it's okay on this diagonal but it's very difficult to actually coordinate the actions of this bishop with another pieces for example there are no more knights here uh and also the most important here is trying to exchange the bishops this way so first wesley so goes for rook e2 so there is no, they're not gonna be the pin on on this diagonal so the, the the bishop can escape and now we have f6 so any moves like e5 are not possible because now black actually uh, starts to defend the e5 square as well uh, we have knight f5 now very very nice outpost for the knight and here Hikaru Nakamura simply want to exchange the bishop, so he follows his plan. We have bishop b4, uh, Wesley so doesn't agree with that, bishop d4, we have bishop c5, bishop c3, bishop b4, and that would be threefold repetition, so Wesley didn't want to draw that game, he feels that he has an advantage, he always can pick up this pawn, it's very difficult to actually uh, defend that pawn, it's too far in the white's territory, uh, and there is completely no support here. So he played knight e Tree. but in the truth he wanted to actually win some time both of the players have three minutes on the clock so they have to uh, really be, be very precise and Wesley so didn't find um, the way uh, to break through the, the black's position yet uh, so we have bishop c5 by Hikaru Nakamura what he want to do is defend the pawn this way uh, we have bishop d4 now avoiding the exchange again and now bishop a6 uh, and now go back to knight, knight f5 and here Hikaru Nakamura actually had the chance uh, to push his pawn and no not lose the pawn, eliminate his weakness and play something like c3. Now the rook is under attack, so something like rook c2 would have to be played and only then uh, c takes on b2. And then after rook b2, let's say, uh, go back to bishop c8, maybe exchange this, this knight and so on. So for example, rook c2, then exchange this dangerous knight, uh, queen f5 and so on. So this is pretty much playable, even black maybe even stands a little bit better. Very solid position. So c3 was very crucial here. However, we have bishop c8. So Hikaru told, okay, I'm in the so bad position, let's do threefold repetition again. Uh, let's at least try so we have knight e3 we have bishop um, a6 knight f5 bishop c8 and now wesley said okay enough i go for your pawn uh you can take my knight if you want 
And here again, exchanging any of these bishops for this bishop or this knight is a crucial. It's a very important because this knight is so wonderful together with the bishop uh, pointing at the position of the of the king. The queen can also join um, the party. It's it's a very very shaky position. So bishop f5. What would happen? Probably e takes on f5. Just exchanging the rooks. Uh, what black can do? Queen e8, and uh, this pawn is just lost. So just just don't care about that uh, and then probably bishop d2 uh, attacking the rook rook d1 now this rook could come for example to b4 so the queen would have to go somewhere maybe queen d3 and after bishop f4 important thing is that this bishop is heading to e5 so very interesting maneuver for the for the black that what could happen for example b3 uh, taking a care about the pawn about this pawn on the a4 as it's still under attack here uh, and also by the rook so uh, bishop e5 and everything is fine with the black's position of course white is up the pawn so uh, definitely slightly better but it's still you know pretty much playable and it was the best what black could do in that position but instead we have queen d7 going after this a4 pawn and trying to make some advantage with the pawns uh, we have rook e to c2 saying okay you can take my pawn i'm gonna take your pawn then another pawn and then my rook together with the knight gonna be deadly over there uh, probably queen f7 would be the way to go here but it's very difficult actually to make this decision because after queen f7 we're gonna have rook c4 uh, and then after exchanging you cannot take uh, on c7 because the bishop gonna retreat uh, okay <laughs> because and, and black would have you know one extra bishop so rather queen f5 and only then rook e7 simply defend that pawn and everything also should be okay uh, but definitely white has a stronger and stronger position but exchanging the pieces in this position uh, would be very very good option for black if it's even possible however bishop a6 was played so so Hikaru says, okay, I'm gonna defend that pawn, what you gonna do? And Wesley so say, okay, you didn't exchange your badly placed bishops for my knight and my bishop and look at this this bishop is pointing on the position of the king this knight also is pointing the queen gonna sneak and then gonna gonna win the game you are in the trouble sir you cannot keep the bishops and the rook so far from the position of the king the only defensive piece really is the queen but this is of course not enough so wesley so in this position said okay start boom h4 and saying now i'm gonna remove your pawns uh, and you are in trouble so we have g takes on h4 and now queen g4 look at this knight h6 this is first threat attacking the queen and delivering the check that's the first also the bishop can come on the on the f6 attack the the g7 together with the knight and the queen this attack is just devastating what to play uh, hikaru spotted that immediately so we have king f8 and now boom sacrifice bishop f6 saying okay i'm gonna sacrifice my bishop i'm gonna take your pawn there are no pawns at all and what gonna happen g takes on f6 queen takes on h4 and your king cannot escape because the pawn controls e6 the knight controls uh, e7 and the knight is defended you are in the troubles my queen gonna uh, go to the h8 and then g7 and you're gonna get checkmated what are you gonna play so hikaru went king g8 you cannot uh, go with the with the queen h8 and here another american player paul morphy uh, said help your pieces uh, and they will help you so wesley so definitely know that rule uh, and he didn't go for the for this pawn that would be disaster queen f6 and now rook e4 and look at this queen g6 let's let's say uh king h8 and how you're gonna bring the pieces to the game you cannot do it this way because um the rook is is guarding so probably g3 king g2 and then bring the rook however black half uh can double the rooks on the e file and if king g2 then rook e1 blocking all of that so it's not that easy to bring another pieces look at this rook that would be the very very sad for for white actually to stack with the rooks here of course white 
still have better position. It's very difficult to find the counterplay, but already with the rooks connected on the e-file, uh, there is something in the air. And remember, uh, one minute on the clock for both of the players and uh, Wesley so could do some, you know, uh, panic moves and, and lose the game. However, uh, he went for rook e2 saying, okay, this pawn can wait. Uh, so now I'm gonna bring the, the rook this game and win the game. So we have rook e5 saying, okay, uh, you sacrifice the, the piece. So now I can give up the exchange and I'm gonna have the rook for two pieces. So I'm going after your, your pawn. Uh, we have rook e3, rook f5 as planned. And now e takes on f5 would be the most precise move in this position because after that, uh, we probably would have something like queen f5 then rook f3, uh, so going after that pawn, uh, and then what to do? This pawn is lost, maybe queen h7, but then just simply queen f6, just avoid the exchange, uh, and the rook and the queen gonna win the game. For example, king g7, uh, now we could have something like queen e6 with check, king h8, uh, rook h3, another check, uh, queen h7, and yeah, and it's all over. King g8, rook g3, uh, queen g6, and, uh, and yeah, that would be the game over. So e takes on f5, very precise move. However, we have rook h3 by Wesley So. Uh, he simply want to go uh, with the queen to h7, and instead of queen g7, which was last chance of Hikaru, uh, he wanted to save his rook. So what would happen? Uh, queen g7, and then after e takes on f5, uh, what can happen is bishop d2, uh, bringing the resources to defend, bringing another bishop. This bishop would be lost. However, after rook g3, the bishop can come to g5. The queen is under attack, so probably queen e4. And after king f8, f4, uh, the bishop, of course, is lost. Uh, however, black would have a chance to exchange the queens. Uh, and after f takes on g5, f takes on g5, rook g5, and rook b2. So what just would happen is black have the passed pawn and not the greatest passed pawn of also black is down the exchange and um, the bishop for the rook uh, and white have two connected passed pawns so definitely uh, white is winning here but this little hope in the in the rapid time control actually that was already the bullet so uh, that would be the chance for Hikaru however he wanted to save the knight rook g5 and actually this is the time to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white. Uh, there is only one winning move and one winning continuation. Uh, others are losing because white are down in material and at that time I'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So, of course, as I said, queen g7 prevents any, any queen h8. So, obviously, this is the best move in the position. Queen h8, king f7, rook h7. And in this position, Hikaru Nakamura resigned. Uh, however, how would you continue now? After a king g6, what would you play now? This is the question because now, again, we have only one winning move, which is not difficult to spot. This is just puzzles for, for beginners. However, you still have to know, you cannot take the queen because you're gonna lose the queen in the game. The only move is actually rook h6 with the check. And as this pawn uh, controls f5 and also the rook controls h6, and this pawn also make a bit of war here, uh, then the only move would be king f7 and only then queen f6, okay? And now everything is clear, that's gonna be the checkmate. So congratulations if you found it. However, after rook h7, Hikaru Nakamura didn't want to test Wesley so and he resigned. So that was the game and I would like to show you what happened in the semi-finals. Uh, Magnus Carlsen, Jan Pomniashi, 2-2, so we had a draw. So as you see, in the quarterfinals, only one game won by Magnus Carlsen and he just delivered the draws. The same in the semi-finals. Jan Nepomniashi had the winning positions a couple of times, so he had his chances, but he missed in completely won games uh, two times at least, and this was 
only a draw. Magnus Carlsen found the resources and it was the four draws and the same uh, happened with the Wesley So and Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, Hikaru uh, didn't do good even in, in that but he found a way to draw all the games. It was a bit nervous in the last game because Hikaru got the better position but he missed the, his opportunity as well and it was also a draw. So again two to two and we didn't have a tie breaks. We didn't have the Armageddon's this time and today we're gonna see Magnus Carlsen versus Wesley So in the Super Final. So if you don't want to miss the games from the Super Final, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.